Hello and welcome to this review of Crown Royal Canadian Blended Whiskey. Introduced in 1939 by Seagram's. Take this purple wrapping off, plastic wrapping. By Seagram's, uh, company Joseph Seagram's, in honor of the royal visit of King George VI and his wife Queen Elizabeth to Canada. Now it's made with 50 different whiskeys blended in. There's no age statement. This is produced in the province of Win uh, Manitoba near Winnipeg and uh, I think the place is Gimli. They have less than 70 employees there so it's a huge mass, mostly automated production. This is a top selling whiskey in Louisiana. It's one of the top selling in the United States and it's the best selling Canadian whiskey in the world. It's now in the world. It's now owned by Diageo. So it's 80 proof, a product of the Crown Royal Distilling Company, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Well, that's the headquarters, not the production facility. So I got a good deal on this at Winn-Dixie, $45.99. Yeah, or it was a forty-four ninety-nine, one of those, and uh, you got this one thousand seven hundred fifty milliliter bottle plus two Crown Royal glasses, and it was cheaper with the two glasses than any other place, just at a standalone price. So I was happy with that. Now the back's peeling off a little bit. Back label for some reason I have to glue that back. But anyway, so here we go. Um, I've never done a video for it only tried about an ounce of it once in my life. It tasted fine, but it's not much to go on. So it's got the built-in pourer. Nice pour. So it's a good device there. Get a lot of these, a lot of these big handle bottles. It's glass, not plastic. Like you get, I mean the cap is, but the bottle. Like you give it a lot of handle bottles, it'd be plastic. Beautiful design. If you look at the older bottles from say like 40 years ago, like say before 1980, they say Seagram's Crown Royal, but then later they just dropped it and it was Crown Royal, Fine Deluxe. That's what this one is, Fine Deluxe. Of course, we all just call it Crown Royal. And then Seagram's went out of business in the year 2000 at the end of the 20th century. And this brand and many others from Seagram's was picked up by Diageo. And other brands, most of the other brands were picked up by uh, Pernod Ricard. And now Sazerac owns many of the former Seagram's brands. It, they had been buying brands from Seagram's back into the 80s. That's another story. So uh, let's see. No age statement, but we know it's at least three years old. It's a blend of different ages, so, you know, whiskey ages. Appearance is brown, right? Like copper, as you call it. Here we go. First time having it. Should have done this first, right? Not wait years. I was playing around all these obscure Canadian whiskeys. But, oh well, that's the way it worked out. It's got a nice etch bottom. So it says it's a CR in cursive established 1939 and then it has the word spelled out in cursive crown royal maybe you can see a little bit of that i don't want it to spill out okay so nice glasses all right and then on the front of the glass there's so many video reviews it's going to take days to watch them and i'll post this about a week after i record it splashing it that's not good Clean that up. Oh well. All right. Uh, pick up a little bit of the fumes on your tongue, which would be the case with any whiskey, honestly. No matter how cheap or expensive. This is a low to mid range price. Now, can you get Crown Royal varieties that'll be astronomically expensive? You sure can. I also have one that John Anilli bought me, the Blenders Mash. Once again, called Bourbon Mash. There was a little legal problem with that. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Okay. Um, splashing it too much, but um, normal whiskey legs, uh, alcohol legs, 
like little fence boards, but um, you just get a generalized um, blended whiskey aroma. Actually, it's nothing too remarkable. But on the other hand, it's nothing bad. It's just kind of standard. And there's so many mass-produced whiskeys that are just standard, or you want to call them serviceable. So the aroma is really uh, corn, faint corn, some rye notes. Um, that's about it. it. Doesn't smell that different from like Canadian Mist or Black Velvet. Or um, those other ones, you know, uh, maybe Rich and Rare Reserves, similar. Mm. I was trying to think of Canadian Club. Yeah, corn. You would figure the base of this is probably 80% grain whiskey and corn, and then be at, they'd be adding in rye whiskeys, rye high wine, maybe wheat whiskey, malt whiskeys of various ages. They're not going to tell you on the website what they do. They just say 50 whiskeys. They keep things close to the vest, which makes sense. Number one selling Canadian whiskey in the world, you're not going to give away the secrets. They have millions of casks, barrels, and they, in Canada they have them upright, you know, aging. In the USA, the barrels are horizontal. Like, it's a, you wouldn't think there'd be a difference uh, of the way they do it, but they do. It's a traditional way in country to country. Get a little alcohol, fumes, burn. Little vanilla, yeah, a little vanilla, a little bit of oak. Everything's a little. I just keep using that word, a little. A little vanilla, a little oak, a little rye, a little barrel. I guess they're shipping in American bourbon barrels. Diageo has many bourbon companies that they own, so they would have access to that easily. Medium body. Normal, like I say, standard. And I don't remember the tasting notes. They have pretty extensive tasting notes, but I thought they said a lingering finish, a long lingering finish. I would say that it's between moderate and lingering, like a long moderate finish. Now I read some whiskey sites and they're like, nutmeg, baked apple, um, candied apple, pomegranate and they go on and on and I'm thinking to myself I just don't pick that up I probably don't have the experience or the ability to pick it up or maybe they're overplaying it I just don't know but from my memory looking at it, the website the last few days it didn't seem to overplay it um, this is the standard introductory edition the most popular one now would you expect more elaborate flavors and aromas with the higher level the black and then the XO and all of these. I think you would. Do I plan to try those? Yes, I do. I think those will be a lot more interesting videos for people than just the inexpensive Canadian whiskeys that I dabble with. I'm not saying I will stop doing those. When I see some whiskey, Canadian whiskey, that I've never heard of, yeah, I'm going to buy it. I'm not expecting much. Sometimes you'd be surprised, though. They're much better than you would have imagined. This is about what I thought. I thought it would be pretty low profile in the flavor. If you want to say bland, I wouldn't take issue with that. They make it that way because they want it to have a huge, wide mass appeal. You get that with American and Canadian beer brands, whiskey brands, and I suppose wine. Um, and then they figure in the real deep speculative consumers for their brands can climb the ladder and go up into the 70, 80, 90, 150 dollar bottles and whatnot. Makes sense to me. So this is going to be more, it's going to be a lot more basic than it's going to be elaborate or exquisite or any of those things. But it seems like the kind of product that I, I, it won't drop, like in subsequent tasting, I'm not going to dislike it more than the previous tastings. 
it may slightly improve, but I don't think it's going to change much. It's fine. I like it. It's well made. It's smooth. I'm sure every bottle you ever get anywhere in the world is going to taste the same, assuming they kept it in the proper conditions. Uh, I'm glad I bought it. $45.99 plus tax with the two glasses for the huge bottle. And I wanted a big bottle. I wanted the extra 1,000 milliliters so I could just keep taste challenging it for years. Uh, is it going to really be this dark in used oak barrels? I doubt that used bourbon barrels probably has coloring at it but it's very smooth and nice and enjoyable um honestly it's we i think most of you know it's not a sipper it's designed to be a mixer that's the first thing they're talking about on the website look at all the mixed drink ideas we have and they have and like many liquor companies they have a great idea they have great ideas you know suggestions and recipes and all that so but for a standard premium priced you know, Canadian whiskey, I was going to say imported. If you're in Canada, it's not imported, but um, anywhere else it would be. I mean, I think it's fine. Honestly, some of the cheaper Canadian whiskeys I have have more flavor. And they're more elaborate flavors. But then they can take more risk, I guess, because their market is so small anyway. Um... And then some cheap Canadian whiskeys I have are much worse flavor. Very questionable flavors. Um, can I think of one? Yeah, I know some people might say, well, name one cheaper Canadian whiskey that has better flavor. I would say Canadian Club. I have a little bit of that left. I might have finished it. My friend David had some. We tried it. I think that one has a little nicer honeycomb flavor. A little richer flavor. And it's... $11.99 a bottle. This would be $23.99 for the standard size bottle. So is is it twice as good? No. Like somebody said, I was looking on uh, Proof 66. You're paying for the name. It's true. You're paying for the name and the cachet and the nice bottle. It's like Jack Daniels. You're buying the name. You're buying the brand recognition. We see that with beer, Budweiser's price more than it ought to be, but you're buying the name. So anyway, for all of those things being considered, I still think it's very good and even into excellent because I think the consistency level is probably just remarkable and the smoothness is very nice. So I would feel comfortable giving it a 90. So 9 out of 10, 90 out of 100, 90, A minus, excellent. Don't feel comfortable going above A minus though, excellent. So that's that's a good start though, I think. So, an excellent to an extent uh, world famous whiskey, and I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down, les les bon temps relais, and y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana. I'm be, and I'll, of course, I'll be very curious to see what viewers think about Crown Royal. Thank you very much for watching this video production.